You've probably had quite a bit of experience before with the Pythagorean Theorem, but we're just going to review the concept really quick here for those of you who have either not seen it before or for whom it might have been a while. Pythagorean Theorem works with any right triangle, so as long as there's at least one 90 degree angle, it'll be functional. With any right triangle, generally there's a short side and a middle side. That's not always the case, but usually is. And there will always be one side that's longer than the other two. That side's called the hypotenuse. O-T-E-N-E-U-S-E, -E -E, hypotenuse. And then the two shorter sides are both called legs. When we're using the Pythagorean theorem, we assign a letter to each of the legs, usually A for the shorter side if there is one, B for the middle side, and then we always use C for the hypotenuse. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the length of the short side squared added to the length of the medium side squared will be equal to the length of the long side squared. In math language, that's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Visually, that looks like this. If I were to take a triangle, I'm going to take a little one here so I have room to draw all my other stuff around it so I can show you what we're doing. If I have a triangle like so, and I take, let's change colors, and I take this length right over here for side A, and I were to make a square out of that length, so that same side there and just build it out into a square so that all four sides are the same length right here. And then do the same thing with side B right here, something like this. And then finally the same thing with side C out here, like so, side C. If I were to take this area right here and add it to this area right here, it would exactly cover up this area right here. In fact, the easiest way to, to do it is to take B, and B sort of sits over top of C like this, and then A can be cut up into little pieces like so, and each of these size pieces exactly fits along here. This one fits along here, and then we cut the last one in half, and each of these little rectangles here cover up these two places. And you can do it with a piece of paper. Cut out a triangle, make sure it has a right angle, and then cut squares that match each of those other two sides. And you'll find that when you lay these two pieces of paper here on top of this one, you can just cover up the square that's the size of the, the uh, where all four sides are the length of the long side of your triangle. That's the Pythagorean theorem. We can use it to either find a missing side, because maybe we know A and C and we just solve it for B using algebra, or solve for C if we know A and B, or we can use it the other way around. We can say, suppose I have three numbers, let me make myself a little space here, suppose I have three numbers and I want to see if those three numbers could represent sides of a right triangle. For instance, could, oops, could uh, three, four, and five represent the lengths of three sides of a right triangle? Would that actually work? Well, we can see whether or not that's true by using the Pythagorean theorem in reverse. Is 3 squared plus 4 squared equal to 5 squared? Well, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. So yes, these could represent the three sides of a right triangle. We call these three numbers then an example of a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple. And sometimes you'll see those where you're asked to come up with a triple for a given number, and sometimes you'll see those where you're just asked if those three numbers could represent the sides of a right triangle. Okay, let's take a look at the example questions.